Homeostasis is the body's ability to maintain a balanced internal environment. Think of a seesaw that is balanced and level as an analogy for homeostasis, the steady state. This balance or equilibrium is maintained through the interactions of the body's regulatory systems in response to changes constantly taking place in both the external and internal environment. Every level of the body's organization participates in this dynamic process in order to keep the body's internal environment within a normal range suitable for life. Some examples of body processes regulated through homeostasis include blood pressure, body temperature, and blood glucose level. Homeostasis plays a major role in maintaining the chemical composition and volume of the various body fluids, which are the aqueous or water-based solutions found inside and outside cells. Intracellular fluid is the fluid located inside the body cells. It is also called the cytosol. The extracellular fluid, or ECF, is found outside of the cells. Interstitial fluid is the ECF located in between tissue cells and is considered to be the body's internal environment. Chemical substances such as oxygen, carbon dioxide, glucose, and ions are continually moving back and forth between the interstitial fluid and the blood plasma in order to allow body cells to properly function. There are a variety of extracellular fluids throughout the body, including blood plasma, that's the fluid inside the blood vessels, lymph, which is the fluid inside lymphatic vessels, synovial fluid, which is located in the joints, and cerebrospinal fluid, which surrounds the brain and spinal cord. Now let's explore the ways that homeostasis is regulated. When conditions change in either the external or internal environment, the nervous system and the endocrine system are the two systems that frequently respond to and correct the change in order to return the condition back within the normal range. Regulation is performed very quickly, usually in milliseconds, by neurons in the nervous system through the generation of electrical signals called nerve impulses also called action potentials, that are sent to organs that bring the condition back to normal. In contrast, regulation is performed more slowly in seconds, minutes, or hours by the endocrine system through the secretion by glands of hormones directly into the blood. Regulation of homeostasis is carried out through a variety of feedback systems, also called feedback loops. A feedback system involves the continual monitoring, evaluation, and adjustment of a body condition to keep it within normal range. The system's response is to feed back information to change the controlled condition. A great analogy for a feedback system is how our home thermostat works to maintain a comfortable room temperature on a hot day. The thermostat continually monitors the air temperature inside the house and makes changes by turning on the home's cooling system if the temperature rises above a set point. In the body, the condition that is monitored is called the controlled condition. And a stimulus is anything that changes the controlled condition. Regardless of the type of feedback system, they all have three components in common. A receptor, a control center, and an effector. When a stimulus disrupts homeostasis, it will either increase or decrease the controlled condition. A receptor 
constantly monitors the controlled condition, and when changes occur, sends input about the change to the control center. Receptors are usually sensory nerve cells that are specialized to respond to specific types of stimuli, such as chemical concentration, temperature, etc. And the input that they send is in the form of nerve impulses or other chemical signals. The control center determines the particular set point for the controlled condition, which is the range of values in which the condition is to be regulated. It evaluates the inputs that it receives from the receptors and generates the corresponding outputs in the form of nerve impulses or hormones needed to restore the condition back to its normal range. The most common control center in the body is the brain. An effector is the third basic component of a feedback system, and it receives the output sent from the control center. Just about any of the body's tissues and organs have the ability to act as effectors, but they are frequently muscles or glands. The effector generates a specific response or effect that can bring the controlled condition back to its original set point. This is what is meant by feedback, where the response feeds back into the system to make adjustments to the controlled condition. The effect of muscles is to contract, and the effect of glands is to secrete a hormone or other chemical signal in order to change the condition.